Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk to you about the principles of growing a tomato hedge. Tomatoes are probably the number one favorite vegetable for most people in the United States and surrounding areas. You don't have to grow them in eight foot beds. You don't have to space them out two or three feet apart. You can set up a hedge. This space is about three feet wide, 30 feet long. There are 16 plants in here and they're planted about one foot apart. This is gonna be a multi-part series if you wanna to subscribe to my channel. But the first video, rather than doing a digging and setting up the soil, I wanted to show you what the growth looked like so you can decide if this is something you'd like to do. And then I will talk to you about how you set up the mound um, now verbally so you can get started. But the next video will be setting up another, probably 30 foot row, just like that, where I'm going to be growing a hedge of cherry tomatoes. They all have to get in the ground this weekend. And this way I'll be able to walk just down one side, pick 10, 15 different varieties of cherry tomatoes, and I think that'll be pretty cool. So the whole idea here is you're creating a row that's about three feet wide. You're not using any framing materials, you're not spending any cost on that, you're just using the earth that is there. So three feet wide, remove the grass, just take it out. I used it down further where there's depressions in my lawn and just evened it out. I didn't want the grass in there. You could flip this over right down the middle, put some topsoil on top of it, plant that way if you want. I decided to remove it. Once I removed all the grass all the way down, I took a, let me just show you a picture of it, a three cubic foot bale of peat moss. You could use cocoa core. If you have lots of home compost, you could use that. But that's a bale right over there. It's about $12. And I spread it out across the entire bottom of this. Came down and just put a handful of any organic fertilizer around a 555, just quickly all the way down. And then I turned the soil over. And that mixed in the peat moss with my uh, heavier soil the peat moss will hold water. It's great for the plants. You can see how green they are. It holds water beautifully. It's enough fertilizer, organic fertilizer, to give the plant something to grow into. And again, if you have compost, use more compost. But I find that it's really hard for us to keep making that. In fact, I've got all this garden set up. I don't have my compost bins uh, built yet, but I'll be doing that um, over the next two weeks. Once you have the bottom set up, it was one, two, three, four, wheelbarrow fulls of a topsoil um, premium mix that I have that I actually had dumped here. But you're going to need maybe one, two, three, four, five, six bags of um, some sort of um, garden soil. You don't have to go high end to raise bed soil. Just get the basic garden soil. It has dirt, it has peat moss in it, and then you mound it up like this. And I'll be going over that again in the next video if you want to subscribe. Once the plants are in there, about a foot apart, and you can see how beautifully they're doing. Now, the benefits of the hedge are really come with disease maintenance, pruning, and just managing the care of this space. Lots of room down here, lots of air circulation. We're not going to have to do a lot of pruning. We're going to take off tomato leaves from the bottom. I'm going to do that in this video open up some air space below there. And as far as pruning goes, I have a lot of videos on finding suckers and pruning them, but you don't really have to do it with this because there's plenty of wind coming down here, plenty of sunlight coming down here. You know, the sun, the wind dries the leaves. You don't have a lot of moisture staying in here overnight. You're gonna have less, less disease issues. It's just really a great way to grow your tomato plants. You're going to have to trellis them. Rather than putting in 14 stakes, best thing to do is pick up this fencing piece. It's a T-post. I think this was about five foot high. They look just like this at the bottom. And it's nice and secure. So these are going to be your main posts at the end. And depending on how long your row is, you're going to drop in some stakes. You want to use a plastic type 
string, I know people don't like to use that, or something that's not going to stretch. If you use jute or something natural, when it gets wet and with the weight of the plants, it's, it really begins to stretch and you don't get the um, secure trellising like you want. If you are going to go with the jute or the um, natural fibers, you're going to want to put in posts, posts um, more closely together so that when you build upwards, your tomato hedge stays in place right here. That's the basic principle. If you're tending it and you're looking for, you know, maybe um, insect damage, you're looking for the tomato hornworm, you're looking for diseases, you can just walk down the row real quickly and inspect your plants. It's, it really makes it easier growing tomatoes in this method than maybe in, you know, the raised beds where things can get hidden. All right, so let's get to the pruning. I'll talk about mulch, and I think that will give you a lot of information um, on whether or not this might be something you'd like to do in your garden. So the other benefit of doing a hedge of tomatoes or a row of tomatoes, this is shade cloth. If you live in areas where the summers get really hot, you're up in the 90s getting to 100, tomatoes are semi-tropical. They don't like the high heat. They start to shut down. This is a 50% shade cloth. You can find it anywhere. I'll put links into uh, my Amazon shop. You can find some there. 50% shade cloth means it blocks 50% of the sun. And I think you might, you might be able to see my hand coming through there. You can just drape this. You can buy it in uh, three foot, four foot wide pieces. 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet long. Drape it over. Let's raise this up a little bit. Over the string just like that. And you're going to protect your tomatoes from the sun and they're going to continue to produce rather than shedding down when the high heat comes. And it's a lot easier to put shade cloth on one long row than it is in a bunch of four by eight foot raised beds or tomatoes that are planted throughout your garden. So for pruning, we're not going to do a lot of pruning of the suckers and side shoots when you let a hedge go like that. Um, and again, subscribe to the channel. There'll be a couple videos on this. The next one will be actually digging and planting, digging the bed and planting the uh, cherry tomatoes in there. And I'll have some pruning videos for other parts of the garden, but we're going to let these grow. So you come into the bottom and you're really just trying to take off maybe up to 10, 12 inches of space. You don't do all that at once. So we're just going to remove some of the bottom leaves. and pull them out. That helps allow air circulation beneath the plant. We already have plenty along the sides of the plants. So these are going to stay nice and dry, nice and healthy. And again, it's just a quick cut. You don't have to cut an entire leaf if you don't want to. Cut half of it, pieces of it, and just start creating that gap. As the tomato gets taller, you can remove more. Let me remove this whole bottom area and I'll show you what it looks like and the amount of leaves I took off. So I pruned out the bottom space, and here's just some of the leaves. That's not a tomato plant, tomato leaf. Just some of the leaves I took out. You're just slowly opening the space beneath the plants. Another benefit of the hedge is weeding's real easy. You just walk straight down here. You can pull out the weeds. We're going to throw some down some shredded hardwood mulch. That will help conserve water, and you can just see what the pruning looks like beneath there. Just starting to remove the leaves, let the air flow. And you don't want to over remove the bottom leaves. You want plenty of leaves for them to catch the sun and use the sun. But this is the amount of leaves I took off. Less as we came down to the smaller plants. Another benefit of growing the tomatoes this way is you can just fill up this whole trench around here with water, it'll soak in, gives you a good idea that you're getting that one inch of water per plant into that space. It's just a lot easier to maintain, um, to prune and all that. So let's get the mulch down. I use a double shredded hardwood because it breaks down quickly, um, but we're going to put about an inch on the surface and I just want to show you what it looks like finished up. And then the next video will show you how to build this, you know, really, well it's going to go right into the space from the ground up, so to speak. I'll show you the mulching. This is the total amount of leaves I took off this hedge. As you're cutting them, you want to be looking for diseases and marks. These are all nice and green, a little bit of yellowing. That's perfectly normal. 
I use double shredded hardwood for reasons I've explained and this is how it looks mulched in. That's going to help conserve water. Tomatoes put out surface roots so it really keeps moisture on top of the soil but you can see the mulch looks great space is opened up under here growing your tomatoes in a hedge makes maintenance really really easy let's come around this side I left this side unmulched just so you could see what it looked like you don't have to if you don't want to but it makes uh, it makes it a little bit easier with maintaining moisture by having mulch down and then finally about every 10 to 14 days or after I do a pruning just any organic water soluble fertilizer I already did this so this is just water but this is all I do is you just want to soak the leaves you don't have to pour a whole gallon onto one plant just your water soluble organic fertilizer right across the leaves you know every 7, 10, 14 days as your plants get bigger you would go closer to the 7 day when your plants are smaller you would go closer to the 14 day hope you enjoyed the video it gives you some ideas of whether or not you might put a tomato hedge or row in your garden please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe I'll have a couple more videos showing you how this section grows how you plant it and really how you tend to take care of it and even get to harvesting thanks for watching